It's Entomology Animated, celebrating the amazing biology of insects using the power of digital animation. Ding. Hi, this is Eric Keller for Entomology Animated. In this video, we're going to continue sculpting the rainbow scarab beetle. As you can see, this is the whole beetle right here. And in this video, we're going to focus on detailing the legs. So this is where the legs are now. Uh, I'm going to turn on, let's see, let's turn off line for a second, but just fill in the polyframe button so you can see the different colors. So each orange colored object is its own subtool. Now, originally I had this sculpted as part of this, but then I separated them, retopologized them, and made them separate pieces. So this is the coxa, this is the trochanter, this is the femur, this is the tibia, the smaller parts are the metatarsis, the other tarsi, the little, I don't know what you want to call it, toe or something like that. And then we have kind of this claw arrangement right here. Uh, if we go down here, we can see that this has a very sim similar arrangement. This is similar to this. And you can see where I really spent a lot of time getting kind of that ball and socket kind of look to it. This is all one subtool, but they're separate parts. So if I went in here and said, I don't know, under polygroup, let's go to low subdivision level. And I'll do uh, polygroups, AV groups, and let's do auto groups. So you can see now each different colored object is its own surface. Um, you can see here we have the the uh, the coaxer right here. So this surface right here matches this surface right here, and this complex looking sort of knee type of deal, which is called the trochanter, matches this one right here. But you can see these legs are very similar to these legs, but they're just kind of different in terms of their orientation relative to the thorax. This is kind of like a horizontal arrangement, where this is a vertical arrangement. Now, when I modeled this, I decided to pose it like this because it's as close as I could get to my reference. So if you take a look at the reference, the legs are kind of folded up here, and they're folded up here as opposed to outstretched. Yes, that is going to make it a challenge to rig. It's not going to be too bad because when I rig this in Maya, I can have one surface, you know, one bone per surface. This surface can be skinned to just one bone. Likewise with this one, and this one, and this one, and so on. That's the benefit of doing segmented animals as opposed to like a vertebrate that has a skin, like a tiger or a person or something like that, where you have to do a lot of joint weighting. So it's one of the nice things about doing invertebrates, or at least insects and arthropods. Of course, you'll notice that the front legs are very different. Front legs, the same pieces, but the shapes are very different, and this is extremely peculiar to these types of beetles. You'll see this almost cartoonish-like leaf-like pattern right here. And if I take a look at my reference, it really does have that kind of quality to it. So this kind of like long claw coming out here, and then this kind of wavy pattern. We don't have as many tarsi on here, so it's not as many segments in the end. Um, and then we have this part right here, which is similar to the other legs like this. This is similar to this part, but it's slightly different shapes, slightly different details. And a lot of these came through when staring through the um, microscope and trying to imitate what I saw. So I've added some detail to the back legs. So these are ones on the back of the beetle. And um, you can take a look at it here. You can kind of see, trying to recreate the quality, the surface quality of the chitin. Uh, remember, every, all the details that you see on here are the product of cell biology. Um, so you get this kind of interesting bumpy look to it, the imperfections, and also where the hairs come out. If you take a look at our reference here, you can kind of see the kind of details I was trying to recreate. I probably made mine a little bit more damaged, but then again, of course, it depends on which picture you look at and which beetle you're looking at. But I wanted to get kind of these little, this pitting here in this fold, as well as some of the uh, surface noise here. And this is kind of what I ended up with. 
Um, so I'm going to do some similar um, types of details in the mid middle legs and I'm going to show you the process that I use because it's going to be about the same as I did for this one. Here's a little bit of artistic interpretation right here just on these parts of the beetle which are really hard to see anyways. So this is kind of where these parts of the legs are here. I'll just solo this for a second. And um, this is uh, about 275,000 polygons. So I think we can divide it again. Let's get it up to 4 million. Just so we have lots and lots of polygons for detail. I've already, um, take a look, I've already done a lot of work in terms of um, retopologizing these surfaces. So I'm not gonna use uh, any techniques that's gonna disturb that. So I'm not going to use Dynamesh and I'm not gonna use Sculptress Mode. I'm just gonna kind of subdivide because I'm just adding the very last level of detail before texturing. So I shouldn't really need to alter the topology too much. Um, but if you saw, I kind of had this like interesting kind of wavy line pitting kind of deal going on. Um, on the hind legs, turn on solo, and show what I'm talking about, this kind of thing. I exaggerated a little bit because I thought it was a really cool detail, but it's on the hind legs here, and I kind of want to do something like underneath this groove that's similar. So the technique that I used is pretty straightforward. I took a Damien Standard brush, just the regular Damien Standard brush, went into the brush options, and under orientation, I uh, moved up the spin center and the spin rate. And then I just drew a line along the edge and you can kind of see what's going on is that spin offset, the spin center or spin offset spin rate is moving the alpha around as I draw. So this alpha is spinning around. Now it's a perfectly round alpha so you're not gonna see much of a difference until you move the spin center, which offsets the center of the alpha just a little bit, and you end up with this kind of curly Q kind of thing, right? And if I make the draw size bigger, it's more obvious, which is kind of a cool detail. I mean, it could be a cool architectural detail. In this case, I'm making it kind of an organic detail. I'm gonna go back one step. Really, the only trick at this point is kind of finding the right draw size to get the level of detail that I want. It's also pressure sensitive. So as I release pressure on the Cintiq tablet, you can see that it changes the size. So what I can do is, let me bring up the draw size a little bit here. I can do it one more time. I press harder, I get bigger loops as I release the pressure. I get uh, smaller loops. And then I'm gonna hold the Alt key and do the same kind of thing on this way. It's kind of pulling out this time. This is kind of a, whoops, I kind of let go of the Alt key too early here. Let's do that one more time. This is a great technique for doing kind of crustacean-like details. I think it's a little bit too intense. I want this to be a little bit more subtle because otherwise it's gonna look like a crab or something like that. So I'll do that kind of thing. Just get a nice kind of repeating pattern there. Do it one more time. I'm being picky. So I want it on the edge. So it kind of breaks up that straight line. And so then what I'll do is I'll use the H polish brush and kind of paint over this just to knock it back a little bit. Make it look a bit more organic and not so in your face. Same thing down here. I kind of like the fact that it kind of turns into just regular pits. So it goes from kind of a looping kind of thing to kind of pits separated by a little bit of space. I don't want to overdo it, so I'm just going to take the H polish brush here and uh, kind of smooth things out a little bit, but in a rough sort of way, which that is a contradictory statement. But uh, I kind of want to make it look organic, not too machined. It is a machine, but it's a machine that is created from the inside out. And now uh, the next type of detail that I want to make 
is this bubbly bumpy thing and this is there's so many different ways to go about making this um, what I chose for this particular moment in time was to take the clay brush set it to uh, the spray mode and I increase the placement I'm gonna increase the placement a little bit more um, I set scale variance down to zero so that it doesn't change the scale of each dot that it sprays. I increase the placement so that there's more space between each dot. And then for the alpha, I just chose one of these small dot standard things, like this kind of thing. So then when I spray over, you can see that I'm varying the pressure on the pen. So if I have less pressure, I get smaller dots, more pressure, I get bigger dots. You can change that, by the way, by going into the brush palette and go to tablet pressure. This has got use global settings on. So that means the settings that are set in the preferences. I'm gonna turn this off and you can see I have these graphs here. So if I have um, less pre more pressure on this side to less pressure on this side, right? So where do I have that backwards? I might have that backwards. Left to right, the curve will be representing light to hard pressure. So this is light pressure, this is hard pressure. So light pressure, I have a small size. More pressure, I have a larger size. I can add little waves in here to add some kind of randomness. And then same with the Z intensity. So it's fun to play with these things because you can get some cool different effects. So uh, let's see, yeah, there we go. So now I'm varying the pressure. So light pressure, I get small dots, not much intensity. More pressure, I get larger dots with more intensity. And then I'll go in and smooth and do another pass. And so I overlap passes. I also pay attention to, you know, the cool thing about, I think the middle legs, it's more pronounced than on the hind legs, is you can see how we have a lot of really big pits right here that hairs are coming out of and more sparse, smoother ones down here. You can see there's a lot of variance. Look at this part of the surface and all the pitting versus this part, which is smoother. Those are the details that I like. Here's the, here's the back of the front of the leg. So this is the front leg. You can see this part is analogous to this part, but there's a lot more pitting on here and it's more severe than on here. Why? Who knows? Maybe it's just something that happened to the beetle throughout his glorious life of pushing balls of dung around, or maybe it's something specific to um, this type of beetle, it's hard to say. Um, but if I'm gonna do really big dots like these, then um, I'm not gonna rely on the spray stroke. So what I'm gonna do is let's finish this up just by adding a little bit more, um, just kinda overall noise. And I'll do a bit more smoothing here so it kinda blends in with this part. And then maybe around here. I like to do it along the edge so it kind of breaks up the edge and doesn't make it look too uh, mechanical or too perfect. Again with the smooth brush and then I'll probably go over this again with H polish just to knock it back some so it's not so extreme. Because again we have on the, on the more exposed parts it is a bit smoother. So like right around here. So let's take that H polish brush and go in here and just lightly brush over it just to, so it's not so pronounced. It's gonna be something that shows up when we finally get to the point of texturing this and rendering it, it's gonna show up mostly in the spec because we're gonna have a very metallic surface. So these bumps won't be apparent until the light's hitting it in just the right way since they're not gonna be necessarily colored. I mean, it might be a little bit. Um, so that means I might have them a little bit more exaggerated than what I see in the reference. I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna just do one quick light pass here just to disturb this. And now um, let's turn off solo for a second um, and take a look at the reference, just to make sure that we're putting our large bumps in the right place and on the right part. So right here we have this part coming out, we have this joint right here. And we have kind of this going around there. So it's kind of like around this area. And 
I'm gonna smooth this out here. Let's go down a couple levels. I think this is too much right here. That's better. And now I'm gonna go back to my Damien Sander brush and uh, I'm gonna turn off that because it's never a bad idea to save your brushes so you don't have to constantly do this, but in any case, I'm gonna go to drag rect and like this the intensity. And I'm also gonna switch to this alpha. There we go. Okay, I've got the I like that, but I don't like the placement. Let's do this. It's kind of following the contours a little bit, but not quite in a straight line. But key with the H polish brush just to get this kind of effect. I don't know. Does that look good? I don't know. Looks interesting, I guess. And I think the end here, this should be smoother. Oops, that's the wrong brush. H polish brush. Holding the Alt key to kind of pull it out. And then I'm going to use the same similar techniques for this part. As you can see right here, it's going to end up looking like this. So similar techniques there. And then the other parts of the legs. Um, so I'm going to finish detailing the legs and then I'll show you, then I will show you the finished product for the legs. Okay. So for the most part, I am done detailing the legs. I'll do a little bit more when I get into texturing or maybe a lot more. We'll see what happens. Uh, but I think I'm happy for them for the most part. I've done my best to stay as accurate as possible. There are a few places I kind of had to guess because uh, I'm still learning about the shapes and it's a process that's probably never going to end. Uh, but I do want to finish this project someday. So rather than continue to obsess over every little bump, uh, I'm going to next get into preparing this for texturing, which means retopology, UVs, a lot of dry stuff like that. I'll cover that in the next uh, movie.